Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppälä. Infinitely long sums in mathematics are called series. In this video I discuss basic properties of series and so in some examples how such series can be evaluated. As already noted, a series S is an infinite sum of the form summation n from 1 to the infinity a n. This means a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so forth. We cannot compute infinite sums because they require infinitely many additions. We can compute all finite sums and the finite sum s sub m which is summation n from 1 to m a n that is the sum a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so forth plus a m is called the mth partial sum of the series S. We can compute these partial sums and we can study the convergence of the sequence of these partial sums and we say now that the series S converges if the sequence of the partial sums converges and has a finite limit. If this is the case, then we say that the sum of the series S is the limit of the sequence of the partial sums SM. So the notation is that capital S, that is the sum of the series, summation n from 1 to the infinity a n equals limit as m goes to the infinity of the partial sums SM. In this example, we study the convergence of the series capital S equals summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 divided by n times n plus 1. We saw that this series converges and we also compute its value. In order to show the convergence, we have to consider the partial sums and show that the sequence of the finite partial sums converges and has a finite limit. In order to study these finite partial sums, we use the partial fraction decomposition for the general term. We write 1 divided by n times n plus 1 equals 1 divided by n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. It is immediate that this is a valid partial fraction decomposition. It can be found by the standard methods for partial fraction decompositions. Therefore, these finite sums Sm, that is summation where n goes from 1 to m, 1 divided by n times n plus 1, can be written as summation n from 1 to m, 1 divided by n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now, these sums now are finite. Therefore, this finite partial sum, Sm, can also be written as the difference of the sums, summation n from 1 to m, 1 divided by n, and the sum n from 1 to m, 1 divided by n plus 1. The first sum is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus and so forth plus 1 over m. Then we subtract from this sum the sum as n goes from 1 to m of 1 divided by m plus 1. That latter sum is 1 half plus 1 third plus and so forth plus 1 over m plus 1 over m plus 1. When we subtract these two expressions, cancellation happens. First, 1 half cancels with the negative 1 half in the latter sum. 1 third cancels with negative 1 third and 1 over m cancels with negative 1 over m and all the terms in between also cancel out. So we conclude that this partial sum, capital S sub M, is really only 1 minus 1 divided by M plus 1. And now this sequence of numbers 1 minus 1 divided by M plus 1 converges as M goes to the infinity and has as its limit 1. Therefore we conclude that the series capital S converges and that its sum is 1. If the series summation n from 1 to the infinity a n converges, that is has a finite value, 
then necessarily the limit of this general term a n as n goes to the infinity is zero. This is a theorem which we prove by observing that a m, that is the nth term of this sum, equals summation n from 1 to m, a n, minus summation n from 1 to m minus 1, a n. This means that the limit of these general terms a sub m as m goes to the infinity is the same as the limit as m goes to the infinity of summation n from 1 to m a n minus the limit as m goes to the infinity of summation n from 1 to m minus 1 a n. But as m goes to the infinity also m minus 1 goes to the infinity and this means that this limit of the general term a sub m as m goes to the infinity equals summation n from 1 to the infinity a n minus summation n from 1 to the infinity a n. But this is zero. It is zero because we had assumed that the series summation n from 1 to the infinity a n converges. Therefore, these infinite sums have a finite value and the difference is therefore zero. In this example we saw that the series summation n from 1 to the infinity n times sine 1 over n diverges. In order to do this we use the theorem which says that if a series converges then the limit of the sequence of its general terms is zero. So here the general term is n times sine 1 over n. And n times sine 1 over n can also be written as sine 1 over n and that divided by 1 over n. As n goes to the infinity, 1 over n goes towards zero through positive numbers. If we write alpha equals 1 over n, we observe that the limit of n times sine 1 over n as n goes to the infinity is the same as the limit of sine alpha divided by alpha as alpha goes to zero through positive numbers. But we already know that this limit is 1. Therefore we conclude that the general term of this series summation n from 1 to the infinity n times sine 1 over n approaches 1 as n goes to the infinity and this means that the series cannot converge. Hence it diverges. Assume that the series summation n from 1 to the infinity a n and the series summation n from 1 to the infinity b n both converge and that c is a real number. Then the series formed by the terms c times a n converges and its value is c times the sum of the series of the terms a n. Likewise the series formed by the terms a n plus b n converges and the value of this series is the sum of the sums of the series a n and b n. And in the same way also the series formed by the terms a n minus b n converges and its sum is summation n from 1 to the infinity a n minus summation n from 1 to the infinity b n. This results follow immediately from similar results and properties of limits and the definition of the sum of a series. This does not require any additional justifications. To compute the value of the series summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 plus 2 to the power n and that divided by 3 to the power n, we observe first that by properties of series, this can also be written as summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 divided by 3 to the power n plus summation n from 1 to the infinity of 2 divided by 3 and that to the power n. Now 
We have broken this original series summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 plus 2 to the power n divided by 3 to the power n into a sum of two geometric series. In the first geometric series summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 divided by 3 to the power n, the, the first term is one third and the ratio of the terms is one third also. In the second geometric series summation n from 1 to the infinity of uh, 2 divided by 3 and that to the power n, the first term is 2 divided by 3 and the ratio of the terms is also 2 divided by 3. Therefore, the sum of the first geometric series is 1 divided by 3 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 3 and the sum of the second geometric series is 2 divided by 3 divided by 1 minus 2 divided by 3. This simplifies this equals 1 half plus 2. So we conclude that the sum of the series summation n from 1 to the infinity of 1 plus 2 to the power n and that sum divided by 3 to the power n equals 2 and 1 half. As a summary, we recall that an infinite sum a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so forth is called a series. We use also the notation summation n from 1 to the infinity a n to denote this infinite sum. For such a series, we can associate its finite partial sums, which are sums of the form summation n from 1 to m, a n, that is sums a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so forth plus a m. We say that the infinite sum a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so forth, that is the series capital S, converges if and only if the sequence formed by these finite partial sums converges and has a finite limit. If that is the case, then this finite limit is the sum of the series a n, that is the infinite sum summation as n goes from 1 to the infinity a n has to be computed as limit as m goes to the infinity of the sums n from 1 to m a n. This is how series or infinite sums have to be computed.